morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to call the September 3rd Ottawa County Planning and Policy Committee uh, meeting to order. Uh, the first item on uh, our agenda this morning is opportunity for public comment. Uh, if you'd like to make a comment to the committee, please uh, approach the podium and uh, you have three minutes. Morning. Morning, Commissioners. Rebecca Patrick, Allendale. Um, I wanted to make a brief comment this morning on the Veterans Committee bylaws that are on your agenda. And um, I guess my comment can really be summed up in wondering why it's on your agenda. The authorizing statute, MCL 35, appears to give the County Board of Commissioners the authority to do three things with the Veterans Affairs Committee. To create it, to appoint its members, and to fund it. In all other respects, the committee has its own authority and reports to and is overseen by the state of Michigan, similar to the Housing Commission and the CMH Board and the Board of Canvassers. The authorizing statute does not give the Board of Commissioners authority to approve the committee's bylaws or to have it serve the board in a quote advisory capacity or to give the, B the Board of Commissioners administrator the power to call meetings. My suggestion to you this morning is that this item should be tabled until you can get additional legal clarity about your role and the role of the committee. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, there will be another opportunity uh, at the end of the agenda for public comment. Uh, is there approval of today's agenda? So moved. Second. All right. We have a motion in support of the agenda. Any comments? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, next item, consent resolutions, which contains the approval of the meeting minutes from August 8th, 2024. Uh, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments related to the meeting minutes? Okay, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of approval of the minutes from August 8th, 2024, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That brings us to our first item of action uh, this morning. Um, like to uh, call up Jason Schenkel and um, we have the Veterans Affairs Bylaws uh, with a suggested motion of to review and approve the Veterans Affairs Committee Bylaws and forward to the Board of Commissioners for final approval. So moved. Mr. Chairman, in, in light of the fact that Rebecca just brought up a- um, Need support. Um, Second. Okay. A concern, I'd like to ask Jordan if, uh, he has any concerns about that. We uh, reviewed the, the bylaws and I reviewed the statute with uh, Jason. And then we also discussed it with another county and their bylaws look very similar to our bylaws. So I don't have any concerns, but I can uh, review it again, if that's your request. <clears throat> it sounded like the one concern was that it didn't need to come before the board. That sounded to me like that, yes, but um, the board itself is an advisory board, so it doesn't have any any decision-making powers. And so it's just advising you as the board itself. So which board are you saying is advisory? This board or that board? That board. Is advisory? Yes. And you're saying we don't have any control over that board? They're, they're just gonna give you advice or render recommendations. Yeah, I think Chris had something too. So, um, so we checked with another county. Um, have we gotten hold of the State Department of Veteran Affairs to find out 
whether this is something that's common practice or best practice or because that would be if if as the comment said the authority flows through the state down to the committee separate of us and then checking with the state would have seemed like a stop on the road here um i did not check with the state on that no uh like i said we we conferred with another county on their bylaws these bylaws are very in fact well very similar in nature and um but i can look again Yes, I would like to. I would like to see if we, if we do proceed today, that um, um, pursuant to um, Jordan um, taking a look at whether or not we can actually do this uh, would be prudent. I think so too. Do you have a comment? Um, to my knowledge, there's nothing that would preclude us from reviewing these bylaws. We are the board, right. so I'd like to hear from Jason. Yeah. Jason, you have the, the floor because maybe you can address some of the conversation of how these bylaws were developed. Yeah, I can. Yeah, we did. We we uh, we did speak with several counties. Um, the mean Jack did review uh, the statute. Um, I guess the main purpose was to officially have bylaws for our committee. Um, there was none to be found. Um, Public Act 192 and 1953 is the statute that does recognize our department. Um, based upon our review, um, I didn't have any concerns with it, um, other than the fact that we were making our committee legal um, and that we had bylaws that, um, that ran our committee, made sure we had quorum and that we had um, processes and procedures in place, just like every other committee would. So that's the main purpose of, of getting it done. Yeah. So uh, to summarize, having bylaws is, is, is a way to help move this, this entity through this process. It kind of sets some, some parameters and, uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, the roster, who's going to represent and, you know, what are the, I guess, functioning norms of the committee. Correct. You know, and then we did our elections and we have our chair, vice chair and secretary that we didn't have before. Um, according to the statute, at a minimum, we need to have at least a chair and a secretary. Um, we were just operating just as a group of people coming together around the table. We didn't really have standardized bylaws that ran our committee, nor did they uh, really have an opportunity to understand what their role was as a committee. So the bylaws gives them their roles, their advisory to the board of commissioners. Um, it gives us the quorum for us to have any committee votes. And, and it also allows us to function um, underneath Robert's role of law. Um, yeah. Uh, Commissioner Miedema. Just a simple question. Morning, yeah. Jason. Morning. Um, how did you come up with um, the terms for serving, such as the chair, the vice chair, the length of time that someone could be the chair or the vice chair? Right out of the state statute. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. Commissioner Klanges? Um, So, I mean, I, if that's all cool. And I, and looking over both the, um, the motion before us and the, and the MCL there, there's a lot of obvious overlap there and there's a lot of same language, I guess what the, what my question is, is like, it appears, um, you know, that you don't actually need to come to us with this because we aren't necessarily, you know, the responsible party this, I mean, whether it's, um, I don't feel that it right. I, in the event that, you know, you operate on the same level as the housing authority or CMH, um, you would just essentially have to send us a copy of your of your um uh your rules and we wouldn't it's not a voting matter for us it's more of an it's more of a hey this is what this is what we do because we don't actually step into your purview ever right i i think the the main purpose was just to have it um legal and signed off saying this is how our committee operates 
I don't necessarily, yeah, I agree with you too, uh, Commissioner, that, you know, our committee makes, it's our committee. And then obviously we make recommendations to the board in reference to the veterans of Ottawa County and what we may need, um, especially when it comes to funding and other issues that the board does have privy over. Um, yeah, so I understand that the committee is our business. I, I get that. I just wanted to make sure that we were, we had something, a legal document that showed that our committee was formed and legal. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Moss? <clears throat> I, I guess I'd just like to say thanks, Jason, and to everyone who put work into this um, for going above and beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate the collaboration, even if the committee is advisory. There needs to be a strong working relationship between the board of commissioners and the committee. The board of commissioners appoints members to the committee, things like that. Um, so I really appreciate that. I appreciate you bringing uh, the bylaws to us to look at. Um, I would like to motion, I prepared a motion and provided it to everyone um, uh, to, I'd like to amend the motion on the table um, to update section four with the following text and send the bylaws back to the Veterans Affairs Committee for approval. Um, section four, uh, equal representation. The OCVAC is committed to equal representation of Ottawa County's Veterans Affairs. Anyone interested in the vision or mission of the OCVAC may present issues to the comp committee for consideration. I would second that motion. Okay, further discussion. Commissioner Moss. Yeah, just to explain, I thought um, just, I think that's adjusting three or four words there. I thought it would help make uh, that section of the bylaws more clear. Um, and I know the committee is committed to equal representation. I think that plain language <laughs> reads better in context. Um, and I am assuming maybe this was pulled from somewhere else. So, you know, I take no issue with that, but um, I didn't quite understand why individuals and corporations were called out originally. Um, just seemed like, you know, doing it that way, you kind of miss, you know, nonprofits or um, other community members or veterans associations or so just changing it to the word anyone is a little more broad. Um, and just a nice, simple change. I don't know, Jason, if, if that, um, if a lot of the, I guess, language in the, the original bylaws were, was that kind of pulled from some other counties bylaws perhaps or? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, so if I understand the, the motion, um, it wouldn't be approval by this committee today. It would be sending this, this information back to the committee, which perhaps presents an opportunity for uh, corporate corporation council to, you know, I guess make, make contact with department of, you know, the state and, um, you know, probably weigh in on where we're at. I had another question too, um, cause it, cause I kind of think that, you know, taking this, the bylaws to this committee and to the full board because they haven't been established before. I don't know if maybe that was kind of a normal practice and I'm going to try to maybe, um, lean on uh, commissioner Bergman for, um, you know, like, for example, when our groundwater board was created, was there an opportunity by the the board of commissioners to kind of weigh in on on those bylaws when those were established, or was that kind of its own separate thing? I hate to put you on this spot, uh, Roger. I was just kind of seeing if 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 throughout time if we've had water board. Yeah, yeah, that's a good example. Because yeah. the groundwater board is also an advisory board. Right, right. And I believe that went through corporate council at the time as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments on the amended motion? Commissioner? I guess Beamer? just one other comment on that would be if there's anything in the state statute that would not allow for it to come before the board. Because I'm from my perspective, I believe it helps to build the the continuation of the community, the communication with the board, 
and different committees, um, such as the Veterans Affairs, there are things that this body does. And so I think building that relationship is a piece of it. So not just only checking to see if it's allowed, but if it's not allowed, right? So I'll respond to that. I, I, there's nothing in the state statute that says anything about that you can't bring it to the board. So I guess my my perspective at this point in time would be then that it's building good communication. Yeah. It's a relationship. Well, the other thing to note, too, is that the board is responsible for appointing the committee members as well. So there is some collaboration between the board and the, and the committee itself. Commissioner Kleinjitz? Yeah, um, so I I understand that. And again, it, it for me, it comes down to um, whether we have any, you know, authority to weigh in on these particular bylaws. Everything else seems to make sense. Um, but as um, as a veteran, I'm very um, adamant about your committee being a your committee having um, the complete agreement that we're, that you're independent um, of this board and as far as how you operate, because according to you know according to how the statute lays out, you do operate somewhat independently. To my mind, having us sign off on your bylaws doesn't minimize that, but it doesn't reinforce your independence, I guess is what I'm saying. So my question is whether, isn't whether you need bylaws, which you do, whether we have the right to, um, you know, appoint members to your committee. Those are all I'm things I'm not going to argue about, but the, um, the appearance of us signing off on your bylaws is the one piece. If we don't have to do it, I question why we do. I would agree with that. Let's let's vote on the uh, motion. Okay, uh, so to repeat the uh, motion, um, motion to update section four with the following text and send the bylaws back to the Veterans Affairs Committee for approval. Section four, equal representation. The OCVAC is committed to equal representation of Ottawa County Veterans Affairs. Anyone interested in the vision or mission of the OCVAC may present issues to the committee for consideration. Um, all those in favor of this say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mr. Sure. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to make a motion also. Sure. I'd like to make a motion that on um, section one under membership, under um, B3, um, it says a uh, member of the Board of Commissioners is eligible for appointment. I would like to change that to read a member of the Board of Commissioners is eligible for appointment if he or she is a, a veteran. Okay. So section one, membership. For membership, right. So B. B. Three. Number three. I, I believe that um, that uh, person I'll, should be. I'll second you. So I would like to have discussion in here. It's I'll second you for now. So yeah, you can okay. continue. Thanks. Yep. I think that should be a veteran. Um, it's always been a veteran in the past uh, that's been on the board. And uh, I think that's um, prudent for us to have uh, uh, someone that actually knows um, you know, what it takes to be a veteran or uh, to be able to be on this board and have the experience to be on this board. So I think that's very important. Okay, any other questions for Commissioner Bergman? I'd like, like to go to legal. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Jack. I have one question, and, and it, it's a very good point, Commissioner Bergman, uh, but what if there is in the board of commissioners there is no veterans then they wouldn't necessarily have a, a board member on it which is possible yeah we've, we've had that yeah mr most um i understand the desire to have a veteran uh who is also a board member on the committee um 
changing the bylaws and the way that Commissioner Bergman has recommended is in conflict with what the statute says. The statute specifically says a member of the county board is eligible for appointment. So I would, you know, not, I don't think we need to try to tie the hands of future boards. I mean, if there's not a veteran on the county board and someone it has a family member who's a veteran or, you know, something like that and is, would do a great job serving, a future board can make that call. I don't think it helps us to try to prevent people from serving. Commissioner Kleinjens? Um, that makes um, that makes sense to me uh, because it is, uh, veterans constitute 4% of the county population, so it's it could be harder to find someone to fill that billet within um, this board. I would, however, um, like to make a motion to change that um, to uh, eligible for appointment as an, in an advisory capacity, um, which would which would um, not allow them to be um, an officer on that committee if they weren't a veteran. Because I do feel that I feel very strongly that the steering of this committee should be veteran driven and in the event that because there were no veterans or veteran veterans available um, i would not want to have a non-veteran in the uh, the leadership of the committee advisory of course that makes sense okay question um yeah, i have a question too. There's, there's, there's not, not a second, second on that at the moment or any of a motion yeah. on okay. it can i ask a legal question yes I think from what I've read of currently how the Veterans Committee works is a board of commissioner that serves on there is a non-voting member. Is that correct? They're, they participate in the conversations, but they do not have a vote. It's not in the state statute written that way, but it can be. Put so they could have a vote. They could. So right now they don't, but nothing prevents them from having a vote. The, the way I can envision this working is let's say a board of commissioner, a, a commissioner is put on the board and that person is not a vet. Uh, they would be advisory, but would have no vote. If they were a vet, then they could have a vote. How does that affect quorum? We, we have people. we have a quorum without it so i mean currently we have six mm -hmm. six veteran members so we have quorum without the the commissioner yes. i guess i'm comparing this to other committees so for example to serve on the agriculture preservation committee i don't have to work in agriculture to serve on that committee different members here of the commissioners don't have to have certain skills to serve on serve on certain committees to have that background is it an asset if somebody has it? Probably. Um, it could be. But it does not. I'm just thinking no, I, more I, broadly. Every, every board every board is governed by the state statute. So we have to look at, I mean, we can look at all kinds of different boards and commissions and authorities. But the thing is, this particular statute states that a commissioner can be put put onto the board itself as an advisor, if you want to put it that way. So, or, or as a member, or as a member, yes, yes. Okay, we have two two motions on well, the, the, board. Se the second motion was not seconded. Okay, yeah. all right. So as long as as long as the board of commissioners, um, who is not that, that is appointed but is not a veteran, is not able to vote, um, I will withdraw my motion. Okay. Is that the way it currently is right now? Correct. Yeah, because I mean, I don't think our previous commissioner was a veteran either. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I, I appreciate the conversation, uh, Commissioner Bergman and uh, Commissioner Kleingens too, because uh, you know, um, 
it, it's sort of kind of weighing this. We we want that influence. We want that experience shared. Sounds like there there is an opportunity for that, but I, I guess I kind of lean more towards open ended as well. You know, uh, Commissioner Moss. Yeah, I, I definitely support the spirit of what Commissioner Bergman was, Bergman was saying. Um, I think in the long run, the direct director of Veterans Affairs will have a lot of influence, you know, in help, helping guide and work with the board of commissioners and, you know, and these kinds of decisions. And so um, we want to make sure everything is always based on merit and making the the best possible choice. And that includes seeking when possible, someone who's a veteran for the committee. And perhaps in the future, there'll be a time where it doesn't happen, but that's okay too. Okay, so we have a motion to vote on, which essentially takes this work and, and you know, kind of sends it back to uh, Jason's group. Um, for further discussion, and maybe we we bring this back to um, you know, the planning and policy, or perhaps if we get the the feedback, then we'll have to make motion at a later date. So, um, all those in favor of uh, this um, this amendment um, or this motion, <clears throat> uh, do I need to repeat it again, or is everybody on the same page? Okay, we're good. Okay, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. So we will uh, look to, look forward to seeing you again and having further conversation. Yeah. Look forward to it too. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. <clears throat> okay, that being the uh, only action item for the meeting, uh, we do not have any committee reports uh, at this time, so that brings us to another opportunity for public comment. Uh, again, we have an uh, opportunity for any member of the public to approach the podium and share comments for three minutes. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dick Van Dopp from Talmadge Township. I just want to appreciate and applaud the committee this morning for the open uh, dialogue that we could hear what's going on, that we could hear what's on your mind, that the wrestling with the topic was done in a public forum. And I just wanna say thank you for that. And uh, thank you for your interest in this. As a veteran, I have an interest in this too, uh, in, in getting this right. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Second call? Last call. Okay, with that, uh, we will adjourn.